Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Well, plenty of global news to get through as more dominoes have been falling. Um, the rich and powerful have been up to no good behind the scenes for a long time now, and it's all finally coming to light. So before we do get into all that, big welcome to over a thousand new subscribers. You guys have been really enjoying these world news videos and trying to fight back against the uh, war at the moment on free speech and whatnot. Um, it seems that that war on free speech is heating, heating up at a time when the truth is becoming very uncomfortable uh, for the elite. So don't forget you can sign up for our free newsletter over at the website if you're interested in all our crypto research, um, you that weekly wrap up and all the hottest trends for free. All right, so the biggest news story this week was probably Diddy's arrest, um, all the crazy scenes and people staying to join the dots of well, who is connected to Diddy and who's connected to Epstein, who else is involved in this big web um, of all these horrendous things that we're hearing happening behind the scenes. So Diddy's currently on suicide watch, the same as Epstein. Let's see if he meets the same fate. A lot of people saying that he is going to start to talk and name other names. And so the next question becomes, well, who are these other names? Um, a lot of this evidence has been out there for a long time. So researchers are now digging up um, these past allegations and things that have been able to be brushed under the rug and swept aside. Kim Porter did his ex, this best-selling book. Um, you know, she passed away a few years ago. It's now number one after this arrest. So as these arrests come out, I guess it makes a lot of these former accusations more legitimate and people are starting to really dig in and see if they can what else they can they can find. So a video of Diddy with an underage Justin Bieber um, giving him alcohol and you know rumors about other stuff that went on. Let's see if that comes to the surface. But think about everything that's been seized now and if it's going to come to light, if it's going to be destroyed, I'm not sure. But some crazy things that we've covered in past episode and a lot of you know footage on these tapes from these places that hopefully is, is going to bring a lot more people to justice. Um, these other big celebrities... Bit of a divide on people calling each other out on Twitter who might be involved and you were connected to him or you went to this party. It's just such an interesting time. And we've seen a huge number of resignations this week from, from government officials to people in positions of, of power. Um, a lot of celebrities seem to be distancing themselves and being quiet. But this is a pretty interesting one. The entire board of 23andMe um, just resigned. And if you look into all this, we've been talking about the connections with these um, shadowy three-letter government agencies, um, connections to Google and so on. So what do you guys think about all these um, you know, conspiracy theories that are now coming out? Do you think there's just so much going on beneath the surface that we don't realize? Um, are you hopeful it's going to get out? What are your thoughts on all of this? Another official um, that's been exposed this week was uh, former senior advisor for public health talking about these crazy freak-off parties and bragging about what they're doing and whatever. A lot of stuff is coming out now. Um, celebrities trying to defend themselves, sending cease and desist letters and whatnot. Um, yeah, Cat Williams has been calling out and naming a lot of names for years now. Such an interesting time. But people saying that Diddy's, you know, the Epstein of the rap industry, but just look at some of these big connections and maybe more dominoes to fall going forward. Um, some of the things that these people say about the people that have now been convicted and how close their relationships were and all those ties, um, pretty troubling stuff. So Hillary Clinton has suggested jailing Americans for misinformation, and we've spoken about that bill in Australia and, and other places around the world. Um we're going to get to some European countries that are pushing back on all this, but we've all you know know the the shady history of the Clintons, and again, this stuff resurfacing lately from the conspiracy corners of the internet, slowly getting into the mainstream. Remember when Hillary suggested in these emails, "Can't we just drone this guy to get rid of Assange?" Um, and it kind of gives me hope that people like Assange have been freed, and there that there is a change of tides um, coming for these people to finally get justice. Um, I won't repeat this one here, but Kennedy, um, yeah, seven days before he was assassinated, saying there's a plot in this country and he wants to expose it and whatnot. So people are asking him, well, how long has this corruption been going on and how big is this cover-up and so on? We know the CIA has been in, involved in a lot of coups, um, plenty of different countries in, in multiple continents, but... A lot of people aren't aware that we've had similar things happen even in Australia. And the US even administered that they would never again interfere with the domestic 
political processes of Australia. And that was after the overthrow of Gough Whitlam. So if you haven't looked into all that, I recommend that you do. Um, talking about, you know, um, our, our guy Kerr, who was the governor general at the time that I guess did the will of the US and the UK and overthrew the democratically elected Australian prime minister at the time. This is a good documentary on that. Um, if you haven't checked that out, I recommend doing so. All right. So the second biggest news story this week was probably the uh, pages that were remotely detonated for thousands um, of Hezbollah members. And this is it's just so topical. You know, some people saying that this is just a crazy act of terrorism. Other people saying, um, celebrating that they believe that they got the bad guys and it's a victory and, you know, really, really topical stuff. But I'm, you know, I'm not sure how this can be an overall net positive, the fact that other devices after the pages um, have blown up. So does this mean that, you know, all your devices can no longer be considered safe? And is that, you know, is that a good thing? A lot of questions come out of what's happened this week um, with the remote detonation that's going on. The other thing that came out was uh, this American university in Beirut in Lebanon took the pages off their doctors and nurses 10 days ago, replaced them due to technical issues. So I'll let you guys make your own mind up about who knew what ahead of time there. Um, <laughs> Another, another huge news story, and it's crazy to think that this isn't even the biggest story this week, is that these further assassination, assassination attempts on Trump. So what's come out since is that both shooters have got these ties to BlackRock and appeared in BlackRock commercial a couple of years ago. So again, more dots being joined behind the scenes. In Australia, Albo's talking about a double dissolution. I'm not sure if that's going to be a good play for him, but a lot of people pretty upset with the way that things are going with that censorship bill. Um, we'll get to some more stories in just a second, but this is happening everywhere. So this is a clip that went file this week with the FBI coming up and for things that you might have said on say, social media and whatnot, but you know none of this is illegal yet. Just because they want to crack down on it, it's not illegal yet. And so if you know, this, this guy rightly points out that they can't do anything about it. Um, they leave with a bit of egg on their face. But don't forget, this happened to friendly Geordies in our backyard here. Um, the police coming to his house and trying to remove videos and you know he's done a lot of great content and satire and pushing back on him and trying to shut him up but as I mentioned in previous videos it's out there everywhere now you know all over X um, TikTok YouTube Rumble you know people are getting this decentralized army of independent researchers and um, freedom fighters or people that just want to find out the truth and what's going on because nobody believes a word from the mainstream media. People know that it's all bought and paid for by the same powerful elite that run the banking industry, Hollywood, all these industries, they're, you know, all, all kind of pushing the same narrative as the, the politicians. But thankfully, countries are pushing back. So today, Ireland woke up to the news that the government has dropped their plans to implement those hate speech laws. So second time it's been defeated in five years. Remember in Australia, we had that bill get defeated last year. They're trying to reintroduce it and talking about it at the moment. But great to see some of these European countries leading the way and pushing back against the globalist agenda. So Germany's introducing border controls, Sweden reversing open borders, um, you know, the Netherlands. Awesome to see so many people pushing back on a lot of these things that the citizens don't agree with. So I really hope that this continues. The other thing we've seen is a lot of these um, charges and things that happened around COVID and that crackdown starting to be reversed. So really glad to see that happening. One news item that hasn't made the rounds in Australia was this independent testing found in the uh, DNA contamination um, 145 times over the regulatory limits in Australia. So look more into this if you haven't already. Um, you know, don't recently that commission got pushed back you know they don't want to have a COVID in inquiry sorry don't we want to know why so many Australians are dying in excess and this number seems to be continuing to increase you know isn't this something I'm not saying we know what the cause is but shouldn't we be looking into this um, and when you see these sort of numbers like well why aren't we going to see a COVID royal commission um, look how much money all these politicians got um, you know from Pfizer and the likes. So pretty crazy. 
Now, William, Dr. William Bay, I mentioned him in another previous video. He's got some more good news this week. We're going to have an interview with him talking about everything that happened to him and why his case against ARPA is so important for the medical industry and for free speech. So I hope you guys look forward to that interview this week. But I think doctors like uh, William, Dr. Gary Fecky that I've mentioned, you know, thousands now are coming together and starting to really question healthcare. And you guys know I was a pharmacist and quickly worked out that healthcare isn't about getting people healthy. It's about profiting from, from people being sick and we need to completely change that. And so highly intelligent people are starting to come to these conclusions and question things. So the FDA has now approved this new MPOX um, vax and warning that it can even kill people they come in contact with. Like, how on earth is any of this normal? And so then people are starting to say, well, you know, I, I was a good doctor. I got good marks. I did all the reading of all the literature and... I have to admit now in hindsight, this is a really brave thing to do, say I was wrong. I didn't realize that what we were doing, I thought I was doing the right thing um, and people are starting to change their views altogether. And more people going down the rabbit hole and questioning um, you know, all of modern medicine and, and this vaccine schedule um, starting to say, well, are, are they safe with all the stuff coming about, about the COVID vax these days? And people have found that there's studies and there is information out there. This is a study of vax versus non-vaxed um, of all the different vaccines out there in the schedule. And this was done by the CDC uh, back in 99. And some of these results are pretty crazy. But again, I'll let you go down this own rabbit hole yourself about why is it that we have this huge rise in um, all these neurological conditions, um, mental health and so on, and we're now giving our kids, I think it's something like 75 in the, on the schedule now before the age of five when you add up the multiple um, strains and the multiple ages you need to get all these at. Um, so again, more research I think is warranted to get to the the bottom of why these things are going wrong in these Western societies with the best, the best um, healthcare systems and um, meant to be protective medicine. Okay, so another interesting one here, another suspicious death found on his lake, doing a lot of stuff in the medical marijuana space, talking about some um, cancer cures he's working on or whatever. There's more and more of these people. We saw those doctors, all the doctors that were going to that anti-cancer conference recently mysteriously died in a plane crash. More stuff like this um, being exposed now as well. This was one I want to throw in there, super interesting stuff, um, storing human DNA on 5D crystals and fan um, really fascinating rabbit hole to go down if you haven't already. I think there's so much more to DNA that we're going to learn about in the coming years, um, but there's been studies showing how much data you can even store is capable of being stored in DNA and now these um, crystals that can store 360 terabytes of data. Um, you know, this is this is really crazy and exciting science and technology. This is the sort of stuff I'm interested in can get behind. Another interesting article this week was about this huge deal that Microsoft has penned, uh, 800 million for 20 years, 800 million a year for 20 years. So 16 billion dollar deal. AI and technology continues to grow exponentially. Data storage it's going to need a lot of power, and I think it's interesting that these big tech companies are the ones making these moves early. They're not waiting for government or, you know, renewables or, you know, ESG, seeing how that movement goes. They're pulling the trigger on nuclear. And you guys, if you've been following the channel, you know that I did this video five years ago about uranium and how the fear of your reactors after Fukushima was massively overblown. It is relatively safe these days. It can meet those demands relatively cheaply and cleanly. And these stocks that we covered, and even just the uranium ETF, I think they've all gone up at least a thousand percent. That was definitely an industry that was terrible, the victim of terrible sentiment at the time, and seems to be gaining traction and maybe the start of a multi year, multi decade bull market. Who knows? Finally, a bit of crypto news. Some of these revelations coming out about the crypto banks and insolvencies that happened last year and how they were actually forced to liquidate even though they might not have been insolvent. Pretty crazy stuff. So Operation Choke Point 2.0, some people are referring to it as, you know, Biden's financial regulators, you know, the Fed, everyone in on it to crap down, crack down on crypto. And what we've seen, obviously, 
is a lot of the biggest exchanges and that are more tightly regulated or even shut down now um, and the big gatekeepers in the traditional financial world. So for me, this is still a bit of a worry um, when BlackRock are talking about this $35 trillion crisis and Bitcoin being the key to it. There's been these rumors about the partnership between Coinbase um, to supply BlackRock and if they're going to mint synthetic Bitcoin and that type of thing. If we go down that path, similar to what gold and silver went down with paper markets and price suppression, you know, we don't want any part of that at all. It's really important um, that we have one Bitcoin for one Bitcoin if this is going to be uh, continue to grow and become a truly free and open financial system. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that one um, and you're enjoying going down these rabbit holes. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget, if you want our free newsletter, you can sign up. And if you want our premium crypto research, um, you can sign up to our platform as well to get all our portfolios and research. But that's it for today, guys. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share these videos around, and I'll talk to you again soon. Cheers.